we've actually invested time and effort to actually have pretty coherent documentation. Uh, we have this little open blog that um, kind of goes on and on about uh, different things that we've built, different things other people have built, how we built them, kind of a tour through the code. This one is uh, Chris Sutz wrote up something that uh, he did around uh, the article search API, uh, the kind of trends, uh, word usage in the times, and we'll, we'll see an example of that a little bit later. So briefly, uh, what have people been doing? So we kind of have all these APIs out. We put them out um, last fall. So it's been about a year uh, since we released the first one. Uh, we've had a developer day. We've tried to you know, get people to build on top of it. Hopefully people here will find something interesting to build upon in the next uh, 24 hours. And so I, you know, the challenge here is to build something cooler than what you see in the rest of the deck. Um, this is, I really got to be honest, I can't remember exactly what this is, but it's a cool visualization. It flies around and there's like, you know, craziness and it's very meaningful. <laughs> if you developed it, I'm very sorry. Uh, this is uh, an interesting one. It's actually kind of fun because it has a lot of information presented uh, kind of in a jib jab format using our congressional stuff. And so you can see their kind of votes and their tenure and state by state comparison and you could think of ways that you could mix this with other stuff about, you know, um, campaign finance and figure out whether or not you want to live in those places. Uh, this is actually based on a, a, a recurring article that we have in the newspaper. It's called Living In, and we someone writes up a whole piece and says, if you live in one of these places, here's what it's like, here's what it costs, here's where you, you know, what's the school situation and restaurants and the culture. Um, and so apparently, uh, no one wants to live in the middle of, uh, what is that? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, yeah. No one, no one wants to live in Brooklyn or Queens. So, you know, I would love for people to do a little research with a search API and uh, maybe send a letter to the public editor, <laughs> ask why they hate on Queens or Brooklyn. Um, but it's a pretty cool app, and it kind of, you can see on the right-hand uh, side, they've mined out phrases, and it's interactive. Yeah. This is one that I like a lot. It's the Elastic Times. We wrote, I think, a post on it somewhere. They kind of uses uh, the facets of the New York Times. So you can see along the top, uh, we have organizations, descriptions, persons, location, and those are uh, c come from a controlled vocabulary. So we have people and machines that read every article and tag them appropriately. So it gives kind of a, a really uh, rich and interesting way to kind of navigate your way through the Times. This one uh, is by, uh, I'm not really sure how you categorize Jer, uh, Jer Thorpe. He's, Canadian, we'll just say that. Um, um, and he built uh, something off our Times Wire API that basically, I think, it, I think, as I recall, it um, it just monitors and watches for a certain politician's name to appear, and then uh, it sets off his smoke alarm. And so, the, the crazy thing about this is that when I talked to him about it, he said he got in so much email about it. And the mo number one thing people emailed him about was like, I hope you're not reusing your smoke alarm for this because it's very dangerous and they were worried about his own safety. <laughs> he assured me that he was using his secondary or his spare smoke alarm <laughs> so all was safe. Otherwise, we'd have to like keep publishing articles just to wake him up in the middle of the night. <laughs> so now we get to how. So you're kind of seeing what people can do and you know the APIs I would read it to you, but hopefully, is there anyone here that can't read? Let me know. We can work through some hooked on phonics later. You can make your way through the documentation. But you're on, so uh, let's build something. So I'm not actually going to live code this for, for my benefit and the Wi Fi's benefit and everybody else's benefit. But um, so we want to build something. So we're going to kind of walk through kind of a sample app, and Tom will jump in here at the right moment. But the idea is we want to. Uh, use Times People, which is our social layer, and Instapaper, and mix the two. And uh, ultimately what I want to do is I want to get uh, my friend's recommendations on my iPhone. So how many people live in the city and they go underground on the subway, um, and I, I don't have connectivity, and I want to be able to um, have some offline reading material. So just as a background on Times People, it's kind of our social layer. Um, People have built different things with it, but basically it collects all the public actions that someone can do on the New York Times uh, site. So you can recommend, you can even do things like post to Twitter right out of the, out of the Times. 
uh, has this uh, fancy toolbar that kind of aggregates everything and shows what people in your network are doing. Um, and then of course it has kind of the prerequisite pages that go along. And so this has a whole set of APIs. People have built stuff on top of it. Our good friends at Plaxo uh, have built a whole uh, integration to pull that stuff out and put it in Plaxo. And we've seen it in Twitter and Facebook. So there's a lot of interesting uh, data in there and customization opportunities. So, and the last piece just for this demo, those that don't know, Instapaper is just a, it's a pretty simple uh, web, web app, that, an iPhone app that basically has a bookmark that allows you to save stuff and then you can read it back on Instapaper or you can have it synced to your iPhone. Uh, and it has a nice little uh, really basic API that works well. So again, we want to be able to grab my network's recommendations and sync them to Instapaper. To that end, so when we look through the uh, New York Times API, there's a lot of different endpoints just for the Times People portion. Um, the two parts that we're interested in is really the news feed of a user and, and being able to look up the user by uh, email. So here's kind of the, uh, the crufty version of our API. Uh, that long 2 EAF is actually an MD5 hash of uh, my email address. Uh, and, the, and when you call that, you get the awesome piece of XML code there to look up the user. To get the, uh, stay with me, don't, it's not that boring, it's going to go fast. <laughs> um, to get the, uh, the user's feed, it's kind of the same system. Anyone could spot the air that's bored here. Go ahead. XML and it's JSON, so congratulations. Our, our good friend Coy is reading about Babe Ruth here. Um, so th those APIs are pretty cool, but uh, would it even be more fun and cool if it involved YQL? Clearly the answer is yes. <laughs> Come on, Tom. That, that was like the best segue I've ever heard. <laughs> right, every, everybody's convinced I didn't pay you to like do this spot now. Um, <laughs> God damn it, you're tall. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, we started doing this whole whole thing with Derek, and we we're kind of like, well, you know, we really enjoy the New York Times APIs, and we think there's, you know, there's all this kind of content that, um, because I'm incredibly highbrow, I really enjoy. Um, so what we wanted to do was kind of make that a lot easier. So um, you can see that in the next one, there we go. Um, we're using Derek's using the uh, the NYT, uh, NY Times People Users Table to to look up the content and kind of find. Um, all of that stuff with that incredibly easy to use hash of his email address. Um, it's easy for developers, it's fine. Um, so, you know, that is kind of a, a thing. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming most people went to the YQL talk. Hands up, who went to the YQL talk? Uh, about half of them. Okay, YQL kind of makes stuff like SQL. So I hope most of you know about SQL. Um, so that kind of makes it easy to, to, to do, but um, the problem was is, is actually when you start doing this, so this is kind of, this is the nice results in JSON and you know that's easy and that's kind of the same result. Um, but the problem was is that if you actually look at the, the table that we originally had, um, it has this kind of, th this API key. And the API key is annoyingly required. I mean, you know, it turns out that the New York Times actually want to stalk you. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah I, clearly. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Yeah, um, we did not do deals with other people. Give them more search. Exactly right. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take this outside yeah, afterwards. Yeah, this is all rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> I think he won. Um, well, let's keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. So um, you know, so we do want we do want to have you guys have to like use the API key. That's kind of annoying. So um, what we did was we, we have this kind of cool cloud storage thing. So uh, you can insert into YQL storage um, anything you want. So in this case, I've inserted the incredibly useful value of foo. Um, but instead, what we did so uh, in this case, I mean, you can see that I'm inserting it, and I get these little store URLs. Um, I need like an assistant in a, you know, some kind of spangly glitter. Thank you, Derek. You don't have enough glitter and you're not a girl, but it's, it's all fine. Um, and you can see that instead of using, so we actually changed the way that uh, we integrated the, uh, the, the New York Times tables with YQL. So at the top, we've now got this kind of story role. And what that means is that we're now saving API keys from the New York Times so that instead of having to go through like a whole sign up process, you can just start to use these things immediately. Um, and we feel that this is really useful because it means that when you want to build stuff in 24 hours, you don't have to go and read through 
through legalese and terms of service and all of that good stuff. And <laughs> you know, you don't have to do that now. You, you don't can have just, to. You can just go and use it, but yes. you can if you want to. Yes. And you should because it's fun. Probably not. But yeah. <laughs> so um, I think that's it. Yeah. That's you all you got. Yeah. I'm good. All right. And so, yeah, thank you, Tom. Uh, so, yeah, so being able to use YQL is much, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice alternative here, and it does get you kind of out of the API key uh, and having to go and click that little agreement thing um, that no one reads anyway. So I don't know how much time it saved you, but your code lo reads a little bit better. Uh, so ooh, so this is, uh, this is how you get our news feed uh, for, the, for that awesome user ID after it's been looked up. You can view it in uh, the YQL. So part of the reasons I really like YQL is there's a lot of interactive development that you can get, start to figure out and piece together your application as you go. Um, and so here, you know, looking at my news feed, Ken Little is uh, reading about how drywall will kill you. Uh, and, and the nice part when I was kind of playing around with this uh, earlier in the week to figure out, oh, well, you know, I should probably, you know, do a real mashup and have some other API. But when I found the Instapaper, I, I didn't actually, I never actually read their documentation or anything. I just kind of looked at what the description was and I was able to discern this very complicated uh, uh, YQL statement of how to insert. So that's one of the new things in YQL is be able to insert back into uh, different services. So whatever, we can run this uh, statement and we get the, you know, their, their errors are, that's a really sweet response code 201 new line. Uh, but it works, so good enough, good enough. So here comes, here it gets stuffed in there uh, in my account. And so now we're going to get to the really boring part. So those of you that, you know, normally wear suits and whatnot can break out your Blackberry's iPhones and pretend to uh, pay attention for the next few minutes. So uh, about the code, so all the codes will be available. There's a URL at the end. I like Python. Don't hate me. I, uh, I also like App Engine just because... I don't, I don't want to bother like setting up a server and I'm lazy. Um, this is a very simple uh, Python thing that I wrote in seven, six, five lines of code to uh, uh, execute the YQL. You know, uh, simple JSON with the JSON stuff gets me out of any kind of nasty XML thing. And you can see the environment that we're loading in is the store for the data tables. So that's what makes sure that uh, the community tables are in there for NYT and the API keys are taken care of. So here's, the, here's how we look up the user ID. It's very simple. We do the MD5 hash, pass it along, get back the user ID. Here's how we get the news feed, even simpler. We pull out the activity out of the JSON and pass it back. This is the really complicated code uh, that's not actually that interested. Uh, basically, when you get back the user feed, um, it has all the actions that someone has, any following, any Twittering. I was just interested in recommendations. So it kind of sorts out recommendations and groups up the most popular ones. So it kind of aggregates them. So if people, multiple people in my network have recommended the same story. I want to make sure that that gets pushed uh, into paper. And here's the, uh, the last little bit of, of code is uh, being able to shove it back in into paper. And I, because I, uh, from the newsfeed API, I got uh, not just the URL, but I also got the title and the description of, of what the recommendation was. I can pass those along so I have a nice, uh, richer interface, and I also throw out how many people recommended it. And I, uh, you know, this is that's a lot of error checking for me at the end. Usually, <laughs> I don't bother with errors. Uh, and then, yeah, that's the the entirety of the code. Fifty-seven lines of code. So, uh, you know, we're able to bundle, uh, you know, three different API endpoints, a little bit of code, and YQL to build something that actually kind of is almost uh, borderline interesting. Um, so how does it work? You go to this great website, uh, forgive me and my excellent design skill. Uh, I don't really, I'm more C++ than CSS. So uh, you dump in your uh, email address, assuming there's a lot of caveats with this code, right? So you can, you can break it in about two seconds. You have to have an Instapaper account that has the same email address as your New York Times account. And for uh, brevity's sake, my Instapaper account does not actually have a password. So, you know, please feel free to save stuff <laughs> to my Instapaper account immediately. <laughs> that would be great. Um, <laughs> when you hit it, it, it goes and uh, it pulls out your feed and shows you back what it, what it pushed out to Instapaper. Uh, so this is 
what was going on, I don't know, I think very late last night. And then when I go to the Instapaper, there it is. So I have the uh, much better formatted and people that understand a little bit of design, although huh, maybe not, um, <laughs> a site that has all, all, the, all my recommendations. And really what I wanted to get back is when I'm, when I'm getting on the subway, I go to the thing, I make sure that it loads. And now I get uh, instant paper on my iPhone. So now I have all those articles ready to go. And there, there's the article cached locally on my, on my iPhone. So those, those poor kids at Harvard uh, are not having cookies anymore in their uh, staff meetings and hot breath crisps are gone. So it's too bad. They should be here. The food is much better. Um, so these resources, I'm sure everyone can quickly type that in if they are interested. Otherwise, you can see me uh, or Google or Yahoo search or something. Uh, but yeah, the code's up on GitHub. Please don't push it back to me. Just fork it and fix it and claim it as your own. Um, and you can go to the demo and check it out and see uh, if it works for you. What was your Gmail address again? Uh, it's D. Godfrid. If you can spell it, you're good to go at gmail.com. <laughs> go for it. Yeah, and since the instant paper, you can actually log in as me because there is no password, so have fun. Um, so just one other coding thing that those that are uh, going to stay here tonight and actually build something, you are my people. So I just wanted a, a special, because this is all self-aggrandizement, this is the API I worked on the most. So. Those of the uh, those of that are here or back in the office can be bitter that their API is not being featured in this slide. Um, <laughs> but the article search API, one of the unique things about it is it, uh, it it really takes advantage of the facets that we have. So those are all the tags. And so if anyone's familiar with faceted search, you can be bored with this statement. But it's really metadata about your query. And so something like um, whoop, went too fast. The article trender app. Um, makes good use of this and there's a long-ish uh, uh, blog post that we have up on the open blog that uh, Chris Utz, who wrote uh, a better version of this app, I did kind of an initial version that was too embarrassed to release the code, so Chris uh, kindly took it over. This is actually uh, uh, mentions of Mac versus PC for 2009, month by month, and so Mac is clearly winning. The dirty secret is, is that uh, the suit in the, the image thing is actually a lot of that is uh, Freddie Mac, not actually <laughs> Mac the computer. I, I, think, I don't think we'd actually use the word Mac that much. It's not probably time style for us, so we, we, we care about those things. Um, let's see, what else do we have? So again, back to the APIs. So here's the list. Uh, if you really want me to walk you through all of them, find me after, and I will bore you to tears about why Times Wire is super awesome and what the Times Tags means. and some of them I don't actually know anything about, so I'll just pretend and you won't know the difference. <laughs> and then finally, for the totally useless, uh, I don't know, if, uh, you just got to be something. I, I thought my, my demo app was a little almost borderline useful, so I come up with something completely retarded. Uh, it's um, Michael Jackson plus the news. So I don't know how many people have seen the, uh, the Echo Nest um, API. <laughs> Right, so Echo Nest, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool API that allows you to like give it music and it gives you back what the time signature is and it breaks it up on beats uh, and mix it with our uh, Times Wire API and then I, I use very minimal code to create the worst podcast ever. We'll see if it plays. Well, Stop by, you can hear it later. <laughs> and, and I will even dance to it if you really, if it gets late enough. Uh, what else do we got? Well, you guys can't see because. And that's, that's it, actually. <laughs> you can go and get the. Uh, Go and go get more information. So, questions, <laughs> answers. <laughs> no questions? All the way in the back. Each question about the classic question. Um, the results, how are those ranked when you get back um, the results of the classic question? So, they're, they're ranked on number of occurrences? Purely on that? Number of occurrences, yeah. So, 
So one of the examples on the year is it's a little it's a little disconcerting because when you go to year, it's not organized alphabetically or lexicographically, but it's actually the number of occurrences. And so if you give it Obama and then you look at what the people are associated with it, it's you know Barack Obama, then it's John McCain, then it's Sarah Palin, then it's Joe Biden or whatever. And it's actually based on the number of occurrences of those terms. What? Is it in the response? It's in the response. One one of the things that uh, is not uh, Whatever, YQL kind of sucks on this one. Uh, <laughs> no, was, the, the community table doesn't actually do a great job, so we need to fix some stuff, but we actually have an API tool that if you go to the uh, open.nytimes.com, there's an API tool, and you can actually see a better example of, of how the facets come back, but they come back in each, each thing. So you have to request them and say which facet you want. There's a whole, I don't know, there's probably 10 different facets that you can get on. Are there any restrictions for using this stuff in commercial software? Uh, I mean, so that's one of the great questions that we're kind of working through right now. I mean, our general our general thing is uh, we kind of employ the uh, no asshole rule, and so don't do anything really mischievous. Uh, our other thing is is that you know uh, it's unlikely that you're going to make three billion dollars on this because we actually have the content and we don't make $3 billion. Um, so I, I think uh, we're working on, on uh, making sure everybody's aware of what the licensing terms are. So if you're interested, come see me, we give a card, we work it out. But we wanna make it just a simple click and you're, you're up and running. Ultimately, we wanna uh, create a system where you win, we win, the whole world wins. And you know we're actually semi-reasonable people if somewhat, uh, slow to get that piece done. But yeah, we definitely want people to build commercially on top of it. But I was thinking of, for instance, if I build an iPhone app using some of these APIs, Please. I can then sell it. Right? Yes. So yes. You wouldn't come and say yeah, you need a percentage of the... Are you really going to make a lot of money on your <laughs> iPhone app? <laughs> <laughs> this is all hypothetical. Yeah, no, I hope you make millions of dollars. If you make a billion dollars, we're going to come and ask for some. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you make six dollars, we will applaud you. <laughs> Mightily. You're not going to be like Amazon. We're not going to be like... The, the re reproduction of some of their APIs in the mobile platform. I, you know, I don't know what Amazon does or doesn't do. We're, we're much cooler than those guys. Do <laughs> <laughs> you need restrictions for, uh, for request per API? Uh, in terms of the amount? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's... there's, there's a, queries per second limit and then the queries per day, but uh, all you need is an email to our email address and we basically up you for regardless of what you're doing. So yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's like, you know, 10 requests per second and, you know, 10,000 a day or something like that. So if you're doing more than that and we've had cases where that's been an issue, we just, you know, we're pretty easy. Um, so unless you're like doing something very evil, uh, <laughs> it's not really a problem. So are you guys going to build against this? I know this is like you guys over there are the ones who are going to build. Are you going to build something tonight? <laughs> All right, that's that's great enthusiasm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the, the one thing is that we got a bunch of uh, special nerd merit badges and stickers and other things, and we're going to be here all night. So if you have questions, um, stop by, find us, and we'll definitely help you out and be interested in anything that anybody builds on top of our stuff. So very cool. Right. I mean, if you build something really cool, you might take to the Death Star. <laughs> the Death Star. We will. We will. Yeah. We'll do. Yeah. Tom was at the Death Star yesterday, and we had fun. It's 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 cooler than our offices. Yeah. There. What is the business model here? Like, how is this useful? I'll distract you, bro. No, no. I I I think it's pretty obvious. I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question. I you know I'm not gonna. I, I think we could talk out after, but I don't want to bore the rest of the, the crowd with that. I think. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, I think it, it's uh, the honest answer is it it fills our uh, our our core mission of uh, extending the reach and influence of the times and uh, make sure that our brand is out there everywhere. Um, and so, people have remixed our our stuff since the beginning. You know, from paper mache to cutting stuff out and pasting it in Windows, they've been doing this. So we want to enable people to continue to do this, but in a digital world of closing the virtual circuit. When you see that piece of content on the other website. That's good for our brand, and that brings people back to our website. And really, once they come back, that's how we monetize them. So that's kind of the, you know, 
answer I give my boss and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you have a mashup or anything else that the bosses sort of said, yes, that was worth doing all the hard work, work of API and stuff for? I mean, we just show them the website and we tell them it's built on top of APIs. We don't, I mean, you know, it's, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. I am very thankful my boss didn't come today and the, the recorder doesn't work. So, yeah. I mean, I think in general, um, you know, our, our senior management's been very supportive overall of, of everything that we've done. So, while they don't exactly understand everything that we're doing, they have trusted us or, or turned the other way. So, we're having a lot of fun. Go ahead, Vitaly, you got a question? No, no. <laughs> Did the genesis of the movement to create all these APIs come from the team that wanted to build them, or was it a managerial? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. as it from the team when you're hiring, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, a, a lot of this is just bottom up, you know, developers that were having fun, and, you know, we want to go home and have access to the same stuff, and we want to build stuff that's even crazier than the kind of stuff that we need to build for work. And so we wanted to be able to actually build it and show it off and, you know, have some fun. So I think it's really, it's, it's driven bottom up. And, um, you know, we looked at places like Yahoo and, and the stuff they've done and say, well, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we were cool too? And so, you know, I, I think it's really driven, driven by the developers. So, you know, there's a lot of people in this room even that have worked on these APIs and made it happen. So it's really been a, a, a cross team effort, so. Though you can't be cool until you've got a hat. So what? You need a hat to what? be cool. Hat? Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm all right. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not going to take cool tips from you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You guys can go. I mean, you know, just everyone's standing here. If you got more questions, come find me if you want stickers or nerd merit badges or whatever you want to. <laughs>